follow me along while I show you what we did. So these are 52 of 78 panels. We have 52 down below the Connex boxes, and then another 26 up top. Um, you can see our solar racking system is custom, to say the least. It's just to hold these panels up. It's about 3,300 pounds worth of panels, and probably another 5,000 pounds of steel, not including the Connex boxes. So we have six collection boxes. So, so as you can see down the line, we have three collection boxes on the yellow conic box. Each one of those carries five series of panels. And by five series of panels, I mean we have five sets of three. So there's 15 panels wired to the first box in series of three for 90 volts. Second set, third set, second box, third box, fourth box, fifth box, sixth box, are all four sets of panels, four sets of three. And they all come together to this top box and go down into this main box. This main box leads into what we call the battery room. There's uh, this is double lot wire, double lot, double zero. Uh, and the wire back behind here is four gauge wire. These come from the collection boxes. All right, so this system is built from 78 OVA 255 watt panels. They are wired in series, uh, series of three, and then 26 in parallel. And that gives us 19,800 watts, 219 amps. The solar racking system is made from six single wide trailer frames that we cut up and uh, bent back in the shape and welded to create this. By no means is the rack itself perfect. Uh, solar array is pretty level across, pretty even, but it took a lot of work. It will take a lot of work if you try this. It's not as easy as putting together a kit, but we did this for, I think we had $750 into it. And a solar racking system of this size is over $10,000. So we decided that we'd rather do this and learn along the way how to get it right and it worked out really well for us it's already survived 90 mile per hour winds uh, pretty happy with it pretty impressed with uh, so we wanted to build our own solar system about five years ago four or five years ago on our existing roof on a property that we had in california and We found out that we could not connect our system without being licensed contractors or having a licensed contractor do the work for us. And the licensed contractor was Solar City, and they wanted uh, an estimate that we got from them. They wanted uh, $75,000 for a 30 kilowatt system. We built this for under $25,000. Using a lot of recycled parts, this is a 46 kilowatt. They wanted they wanted 75,000 for a 30 kilowatt system, and this is a 46 kilowatt system for under 25,000. And uh, we used a lot of recycled parts. Uh, the panels are new. The batteries are pretty much new. They're new overstock, so um, they were just a, an awesome deal. Each battery is a $5 battery that we got for $0.58 cents because they were a year old and sat in a warehouse uh, fully charged and discharged one time. And they all came back to life and tested. 
fairly well. And, but as I said, we did use a lot of recycled parts and stuff down there. This is our generator welder. It's a Hobart 225 Champion Elite. And it is a welder generator. So we have it grounded to our um, recharging system right now. Um, we will, when we, if we need to ever charge, if we ever need to use this again, we can just plug this in here and it'll slowly recharge our system. This is a, a 10,000, it's an 11,000 watt peak, 9,000 watt running generator. Uh, so it'll put about 100 amps into the system per hour, and it's very dirty. It took 10 to 12 hours to charge our battery bank every day that we use our batteries. And we, you know, we're using right now, we're using uh, approximately 23 kilowatts a day. That was my the last number that the battery of battery management system put out was 23 kilowatts a day and that wasn't since we started running the air conditioners i haven't really looked at it since then but um yeah the generator is underpowered for the system it could take a the system can take an input of about gosh, i think it's 320 amps so 30,000 watts incoming no problem Right now we have almost 20,000 watts when the sun is at the highest point and we're, you know, the, that time of day, the sun's right over the top of it. Um, and it can still handle more. We just, that's, the, this uh, panel system will charge double the amount of batteries that we have currently. We call this triple utilita. This is our 46 kilowatt power plant. I'll go over the whole system with you. So this is our battery testing station. And next to our AC breaker box, which is currently exposed until after the inspector gets here. These are our inverters. They are six grow watt, 3000 watt inverters. They have a 9000 watt peak. They're running parallel for a total of 18,000 watts, 54 kilowatt or 54,000 watt peak on them. Batteries are almost fully charged. As you can see, our maximum voltage is, should be right around 58.4, 58.5. So this is our 18650 power bank. It's 46 kilowatts. The batteries are 300P14S. So each one of these cells is 300 batteries. And there's 14 of them. And that equals 4,200 batteries. This is one of our spares. And as you can see, it's this is one of the batteries that we started with. These are China cells. That's what I commonly refer to them as. Uh, they're fake Samsung 30Qs. And this battery management system detected right away that these China batteries were very low quality compared to these batteries. 
These are Panasonic and LG. And I know that they are real because we bought 2,100 of these to build this bank with. And our batteries are fairly well balanced right now. They're about 85% charged. We're currently having a problem with our shunt. We're not being able to, we're not getting a display of voltage, amperage, or wattage right now. And something happened when we tore the system down to upgrade our wiring. When we put it back together, we started getting a low voltage code. And now we have to break the, the batterium down, which is this guy. This is our battery management system. And this is our shunt. And all we're getting here is a, green, a red light. We're not getting any green light. We've gone through all the diagnostic procedures that they recommend and that I know from my electrical experience. And it's, they're coming to the conclusion that the batterium is reading that it is underpowered and it has shut the shunt down. So it's got to go back to Australia. This channel is about us building our off-grid life and not try not to compromise with the lifestyle that we want to build. And to do that, we had to move to a state that has a little less law, a little less government, a little more freedom. So stay tuned. We're going to build a 50 by 100 barn dominium. It's going to be half living quarters, half shop, multiple shops, automotive fabrication, and a woodworking shop. Keep watching.